I feel good is not taking any risks. Sure. Like that shit is is so boring. I'm very in belief that fear is such a guiding thing in in life. The more you do the things you're afraid of, the more you see that what you're afraid of is all bullshitting in your head. Very yeah. true. Hey, that's real spill, man. Don't let fear guide you. Don't let fear give you direction in life. Like a lot of times in life, we base things around, am I capable or shall I do it or what's the consequences of what I'm doing? You have to be aware of the consequences when you're dealing in fear, but you got to take some chances, man. Being comfortable is the thing that can kill you the most, just being comfortable, being too comfortable. Man, I got my, my tie loose and a little too loose or whatever But being comfortable can kill you man It can keep you stagnant But doing things that you're Afraid of Can lead to a, a sense of freedom And can free you But if you're aware of the consequences You know what you can and you cannot handle Real talk rest in peace to Mac Miller Salute man let's get on into the podcast Man y'all see the title It's going back to Cali Y'all know what today is It's Mother's Day I'm going to get into that after I intro the pod and tell y'all the topics of discussion. We're going to be talking about the clock dial experiment, something that I learned as of recently. Um, we got to talk about Trump, man. Donald Trump. A lot of people might not be political. As a matter of fact, I'm not really a political man myself. But some of the things that he said during his um, speech, it was entertaining and it was educational. And I think that everybody needs to to. Touch basis on that We're going to talk about Tory Lanez He speaks out from jail About his case Rick Ross talks about support I got some dope songs of the week I got to acknowledge the mothers man And I just got some dope things to do man Some dope topics of discussion today though man Appreciate y'all for tuning in man Real talk That's one thing that I always do I'm very appreciative of everybody That subscribed to this channel That is Supporting this channel That shared this show man Because it's a lot of people that could be, and they ain't here. But right now, you're here with me, and I'm highly appreciative that you're here in my presence. Let's go. So tonight, I'm just cool and relaxing, man. I titled the show Going Back to Cali because my wife's birthday coming up, man. The 23rd. If y'all want to say something to her in the comment section, say happy birthday, Key. That's all y'all got to say, man. Happy birthday, man. That's my baby. But we're going back to Cali. We enjoy the West Coast. We enjoy the beautiful Pacific Ocean, the food. The, the different cultures and the vibes that's, that goes on out there. I actually like the desert, too, to be honest. Even though I'm a man that's a vegan and I love greenery and plants and stuff, though. But I like the desert. And we're just going to have a good time, man. We're going back to Cali. And the reason I'm making y'all aware that I'm going back to Cali because y'all won't get a podcast next weekend because I will be there. I will be there. So I got to let the La Familia know that there won't be no podcast next week. I apologize. Heads up, I apologize, man. But I got to get into the topic, man. Mother's Day. Real talk, Mother's Day. I got to talk about the mothers, the beautiful ladies, man. I know at the end of the day, dudes be jealous and be like, man, they don't never talk about Father's Day. But sometimes women, they have to put down their goals, their dreams to raise a child. It's, it's their responsibility. It's coming out of them. And, and at the end of the day, sometimes men don't appreciate that, man. Not like how we should or whatever. So I just want to acknowledge the ladies and say, man, salute to y'all. Thank y'all for everything y'all do. Thank y'all for raising and nurturing males and, and females also. Thank y'all. I'm very appreciative. If I could send all the mothers in the world roses and a $100 gift card to Ruth Chris or something like that, I would. But... 
I only have one of those And I want to acknowledge my mother first Before I get into the podcast And tell you the The thing that I notice about my mother the most And the thing that I appreciate the most Growing up we wasn't rich or whatever We didn't have much of nothing But when it came to The people around her needs Her son Her daughter Her grandkids Her mother This is the only person in the world that I know That is this selfless She's selfless when it comes to being of service to other people. Y'all know me, that's that's like I think my purpose on earth is being of service to others. And I inherited that from my mother when I think about it because I never seen her do a selfish act. Everything she did was selfless and it was for others. And man, I never seen that from nobody else. I just highly appreciate that. I'm thankful for you mom I love you to death And you mean the world to me Happy Mother's Day And the day after Mother's Day is her birthday Lord Jesus But y'all know On every podcast I have a glass of wine I still got my Java Mint cigar But this week I ran into a lady And let me Oh I know her name by heart I remember her name is crazy I took notes I take notes for every pod but I took notes because I didn't think I would remember her name So she was in front of Total Wine Her and the dude who was bringing in the cases of wine Her wine is called Shoe Crazy By Milan A. Red Shoe Crazy You see it got the high heel on it or whatever I'm about to take take me a couple of sips of it right quick But she is a black lady I'm supporting a black business And I want to see her win Her name is Gwen Hurt Gwen Hurt She owns some wine And let me Let me get a sip of this wine man She's from California She coming from a whole nother coast And look I'm going back to Cali She from California She on a whole nother coast Shipping her cases To the total wines And getting the wine Into the The places or whatever And her name is Gwen Hurt And I actually met her And I didn't know she was Whoa, Kimo Sabi, big balling is a hobby type of lady. So I bought two bottles of the wine. It was just $12.99. But y'all know good wines really ain't expensive or nothing like that. It ain't about the price, it's about the quality at the end of the day. So shout out to Gwen Hurt. The wine is phenomenal. And uh if y'all want to support her brand, go to Shoe Crazy, California, Melange A Red Wine. We're gonna get into the first topic though, man. And this topic. Somebody responded to this topic Y'all know before I do all of the podcasts I put the topics of discussion In the Facebook group And if you ain't a part of that Facebook group Go to Trevor Jackson Podcast on Facebook And you'll see the group And if you're listening to this audio version Come on over to YouTube Or to the Spotify The Spotify has all the visuals now And it's Trevor Jackson T.V. But this first topic of discussion Is from a guy that is phenomenal in his creativity and it and his business acumen and he's talking about support when i go to these young pages and i only see one like after eight minutes all that tell me is everybody you grow up with they see it and they go by they don't hit that button why don't they hit that button is, is it because of the things they've said amongst others and they don't want to seem flaw liking or supporting what you got going on. 80% of the time when I see my people, I ain't even listening to that. I like it. If that's my partner, if that's my homie, and if that's what he on, I'm with it too. I like it. He said, I don't even got to see it. I don't even got to listen to what he talking about. He my partner. He my homie. I support it. I like it. But let's talk about social media. and uh, uh, It's not reality, first of all. So me personally, I'm not going to hold you accountable for supporting or not supporting what I do on this podcast and social media. You don't have to like love nothing. But at the end of the day, I will appreciate it. I'm appreciative of it. But how you treat me in the real world and in real life, that's what really matters, dog. All that other stuff don't even matter, to be honest. And at the end of the day, some people take social media as real life and they get in their feelings by the numbers. 
that means you don't enjoy what you do. You're doing it for gratification and instant gratification and to see if somebody is approving of what you're creating. At the end of the day, if you love what you create and you do not need approval from nobody, that's bullshit behavior, man, when you need approval from people. So I understand what Rick Ross saying about support and support on social media and liking it. If it's your partner for real But social media we shouldn't give it that much power At the end of the day I know it's paying some individuals bills And People are thriving from it And people are competitive And they want to be able to be successful Like their friend Their friend might got 1200 likes And you got 3 Is that going to have you in your feelings? It should at the end of the day But we're going to stay into the streaming Social media realm of discussion I'm going to stay in the hip hop area Because I, I I got some good stuff though Some books I read And at the end I'm going to talk about Trump Got to talk about Trump And that was, inter- that was interesting and entertaining And informational All three of them at the end of the day But I'm going to stay in the hip hop realm And Snoop spoke on streaming And I think I got some game for the youth about streaming. Me and my boy Scoop, Marquise, if y'all know him, y'all know him. Marquise, we talked about this last year about how the financial things that goes on through streaming, the way it's set up and the way it is and everything and how um, it's a physical aspect and a digital aspect to the financial perspective of streaming. What side are you on? That's when you'll get to understanding how the the thing works When you know it's a physical aspect and a digital aspect Real talk Streaming gotta get get their shit together Cause I don't understand how the fuck you get paid off of that shit (laughs) Like, I mean, can somebody explain to me how you can get a billion streams And not get a million dollars Like, that shit don't make sense to me like, I don't know who the fuck running the streaming industry, if you in here or not. <laughs> but nigga, you need to give us some information on how the fuck to track this money down. Because one plus one ain't adding up to two. That shit don't add up. And I have to say it. Because that's the main gripe with a lot of us artists is that we do major numbers with streams and this shit, but it don't add up to the money. Like, what the fuck is the money? When I first came out, my records would sell based off of physical. If you sold a million copies, that means if $9.99, $9 million, you get this percentage, that's what it is. So if I sell how many streams, how much money do I get? It's not being translated and, and it's not working for the artist right now. And I just want to speak to that in yeah, the no, music industry. Talk. Like, that's fucked up. And we need to find a way to figure that out the same way the writers are figuring out the writers are striking because streaming, they can't get paid. Because when it's on the platform, it's not like in the box office. In the box office, if it does all these numbers, you may get an up. Oh, it did this many, here's another check. But on streaming, you got 300,000 hours that somebody watched your movie. Where's the money? And I know I'm going off a script right now, but no, no. fuck it. This is business. <laughs> Jackson podcast. I need to see how much Snoop worth because for him to be up as much as he's up financially and not know the financial structure of streaming is weird to me. For me to be in the position I'm in and for me to be the person I'm I am and for me to know and for Snoop to not know is baffling to me to me. I hope y'all know before I even speak about it because he said one plus one doesn't equal two. It does equal two, Snoop. He said, where is the money? Uh, at the end of the day, it's a, it's still, he think that all the money is being made digitally. It's not true. It's a physical aspect to streaming because if you are, own <laughs> we're getting into ownership man and black folks need this is a black podcast i'm talking black topics 
I love my people, but we got to be knowledgeable. We got to talk about ownership. If you own something, you can dictate how much you are going to pay people because I own it. You need this platform to even get heard. You need my platform. I don't need you, dog. So it was one point of time. I don't know if Jay Z still owned title or whatever. Y'all remember when Jay Z owned he he had a percentage in title. He was getting Nicki Minaj involved and Kanye involved, and they all own title together. The reason he did that is because he seen he foreseen this coming to where music would be worthless. So he wanted to own. That's why I salute Hove, man. People be thinking I be on his testicles paws, but I'm not. At the end of the day, I admire his business acumen because he foreseen this coming before it, before it happened. So for Snoop to not know where the money at unless he playing stupid is crazy to me. So Hove wanted to own the streaming service. Owning the streaming service He could dictate how much a person make By putting their music on his platform But Hove couldn't compete with Apple and Spotify Because they was already established So if they tell you they're going to give you 70% of a penny To put your music on their platform That's what you're going to get And there ain't nothing you can do about it They can They can decrease it if they want to Or increase it if they want to But at the end of the day They got the market cornered and by them having the market corner, what you going to do unless you're going to create a website or your own streaming platform for people to purchase your music? Do you got that many fans? Most likely you don't. Or when Nipsey came out with the hundred dollar CD, he seen it coming before it came, man. So I don't understand why Snoop don't understand where the money is. at. That's crazy to me, man. But I'm going to switch the topic man I hope that y'all learned something from that And understood that Because You got to know where the money is The money is in ownership Ain't no if, if I don't own stock Or I don't own a percentage in YouTube They can pay me whatever I want for this podcast They dictate my worth If I don't do it for myself Apple Music and DistroKid and all of those other platforms, they dictate your worth if you don't create your own lane. They dictate your worth. You can't even put on DistroKid that I want to sell my CD for $250. You got to put the limits that they allow on their platform. That's all I'm trying to say, man. I'm going to switch it up to another topic, though. I don't want to get too heavy from the beginning of the podcast. And I want to go to... uh, a player that I I liked in sports. I love him in sports. He's retired now. He's a, a Tar Heel, a re, a one of the best Tar Heels to ever play. And he said something that caught my attention, man, in a podcast recently. I ain't never tell nobody this. I don't even think I told you this. When I was out there in Portland, they asked me to do a don't do drugs commercial. <laughs> <laughs> right? And you know, with me being a face of that Blazer team at the time, I was like, uh, I was like, let me get back to you on that one, right? <laughs> so the next day in practice, you know, the PR person came again. She's like, hey, so what do you think about, um, you know, the PSA that don't do drugs? I was like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and she was like, why? I said, well, I said, being as though I smoke marijuana, I said, that'll be very hypocritical of me to go up here and do a national PSA telling your kids don't do drugs. Don't smoke and da 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 da. I said, no, nah. I said, I can't do that. I'm going to be quick on this uh, part of the podcast because it's easy for me. Like, give me your perspective after I say mine in the comment section, please. I would highly appreciate it. It is hypocritical because you did do drugs and you do do drugs, but. At the end of the day, you are the perfect candidate to speak to people who shouldn't do drugs. The person that's on it. When a person comes speaking about drugs that's not on it, the people ain't going to listen. If you bring a meth addict 
into an auditorium full of kids telling them not to do drugs? Are they going to listen to the meth addict or are they going to listen to the person that's not on meth? You was the perfect candidate. But at the end of the day, I think at that time, because KD just announced that he smoked weed and on an interview, he said it. He said, I'm high right now. At that time, he probably would have lost all everything that he was doing in the NBA, probably lost his contract, broke his contract at that time. So if that's the reason why he didn't say it, I understand it. But if he would have said it while he was doing drugs and while he was on marijuana, he was the perfect candidate for it. Real talk, just my perception. Give me y'all perception in the comment section. I would highly appreciate it. But I'm going to play my first song of the week, man. First song of the week, Dirk and J. Cole. Let's get it. All my life. Let's go. Dougie, you told me he been on some positive shit, yeah, yeah Lately I just wanna show up and body some shit, yeah, yeah Always been a little mad petition Lately this cash I'm getting Got me losing count of these bags I've been moving too fast Hard times don't last Remember when cops are rats Talking out my ass Boy, you ain't shit but a bitch with a badge All my life They be trying to keep me down All this time Make it out. No, no. No. All my life. Keep me down. I decided I had to finish. But the media called me a menace. I just said with the mayor and politicians. I'm trying to change the image. You can't blame my past no more. I come from the trenches. Some said I'd never be a superstar, but I know I'm different. No, no. I'm the voice, but the system ain't give me a choice. Know some people that's still undeployed. I know a felon who trying to get forward. Child support, you only support. For a visit, I'm going through courts. Went to jail, they were chaining me up. And you know that I'm famous as fuck. See how you gon' joke about stimulus, but they really had came in the clutch. I know some kids wanna hurt themselves. Stop trying to take drugs, I refer to myself. Trying to better myself, trying to better my health, but. All my life. All my life. Yeah. They be trying to keep me down. All this time. Never thought I'd make it out. Jackson podcast. Hey man, that record was a vibe. And like I said before that record came on, the person who has experienced it and did it is the perfect candidate to speak about the things. Rasheed Wallace, that's my that's just my view. Because you see, Dirk is talking about he's almost healed all my life. They try to bring me down. You know what I mean? It's just like the person who been through it, the person who's experienced it, man. The only reason I put celebrities on this screen to talk about the stuff they talk about or whatever is because people will prefer to listen to the celebrity speak than listen to a person who's experienced it. You are rather the person that's successful speak about it than the person who has experienced it. When the person who has experienced it is the perfect candidate to talk about it. The things I talk about, I've experienced it. I researched it or I've learned it from experience, man. We're going to get into the next topic, though. We're going to get into some educational stuff, man. Even though that was educational, even though I use sports and athletes at the end of the day. And just to let y'all know, y'all ain't getting no podcast next week, man. I'm going back to Cali, dog. First class. But I'm going to do a book review first. Before I get into the topic, the Clark Doll experiment. And this experiment, I knew nothing about it until last week, sometime last week. I was watching the Star Report. Y'all know that's my favorite show on YouTube, my favorite podcast on YouTube, the Star Report. That's my dog, man. Even though we don't know each other, or whatever, I just support what he do and what he talk about and his perspective and his views. The thing, the way he viewed things, I view it in a similar aspect. I'm not a follower, but I listen. I'm not a fan, but I listen and I appreciate his perspective. 
I appreciate it because I view life in similar ways. Not in all ways. <laughs> Not all his ways. That nigga crazy, but that's my dog, man. But this book review. This book, hold up. Let me get the, the title of the book right quick. What the Children Told Us. The author is Tim Spofford. The untold story of the famous doll test and the black psychologist who changed the world. So, the psychologists that they're talking about, their names is Kenneth and Mamie Smith. This book was written recently, but it's about the 1930s. And then the Clark, the Clark doll experiment was created in the 40s. So, Mamie is the female. She's from Arkansas. And Kenneth is from Harlem. Both of these individuals they met at Howard University in D.C. They got married young or whatever. And to listen to that book and to listen to how I'm going to purchase the, the physical copy also. But I, I got so many books I'm reading right now. I'm all over the place, but I'm going to purchase it because I really enjoy this book. But they met as freshmen in D.C. And to hear how they got married and how they was ridiculed for the way they got married and the way they did things. They was very intelligent people. Very intelligent young individuals. And they were psychologists. In the book, they was talking about segregation. And how segregation created low self-esteem and lack of self-values, valuing yourself, knowledge of self, educating yourself on who you are instead of the things that you want to obtain. This book, crazy. Like, I study a lot of black history. I celebrate Black History Month every year. I, I go to the the legendary spots. I want to go to Charleston, South Carolina next year. That's where I'm going. I went to D.C. this year, but next year I'm going to Charleston, South Carolina in February. But I'm going to just play an excerpt from this book so y'all can get a piece of it. And then we're going to come, we're going to come on back and talk about the clock dial experiment. Let's go. His was a sensitive topic. The Inferiority Complex of Negroes, the topic of his recent term paper. He was afraid it would offend his audience, but took the risk anyway. The gist of his speech, though lost in the shuffle of time, survives in his term paper and reveals his Adlerian views on racial politics and identity. Kenneth argued that the white migrants who settled America, despite their humble origins, treated the indigenous and black slaves they met in the New World as inferiors. As a result, blacks developed a deep sense of inferiority. Kenneth held that in modern times, these problems were as much psychological as political or economic. He pointed out, for example, that half the advertisements in the African-American press were for skin bleaches and hair products that aimed to make blacks look more like whites. If you want to lighten dark, ugly skin fast, just try Fan Tan Bleach Cream. Kenneth wrote that poor blacks often carried razors to assert their manhood, and that dandies in green suits or other outlandish attire were salving damaged egos. <clears throat> in that era and in that time, I can't imagine the things that they had to deal with. But... We still deal with similar aspects of it today, even within our own people. It's like everything about us was devalued. The color of the skin, the texture of your hair, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you smell. We smell different as human beings. And by it being that way, we lost a sense of value of the self. Tell your girl to go natural tonight. <laughs> if she's not a natural hair girl, some men got natural hair girl wives. But tell your girl to go natural tonight. Cut her hair off. Watch how she fight to, to not be who she originally is. 
we perceive light skin as better. Still, it's 2023, dog. We still feel that way. I just don't understand, like, the lack of knowledge. Biblically, it says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I can understand in those times, in those situations, but now, wow, we trying to become more knowledgeable on the daily. More aware of self. Love yourself more. More knowledge of the self. Because if you don't know who you are, then... What? Well, you don't know who you are. You lost in the soy sauce, dog. Real talk. But I'm going to show this visual of the Clark Dial experiment. I might get a strike or whatever. On, on I ain't going to get a strike on YouTube. I'm going to get a copyright thing because I'm going to ask for just the use of it. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to take it. I'm just promoting it, the use of it. They can take the video and make the finances off the video. But I want my people to become knowledgeable and aware that this is what was happening in the 40s. All is the black doll. And which one is the white doll? That one. Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? And which doll is the bad doll? And, what, and why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he, because he's black. Which doll looks most like you? Me? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. Okay. The Trevor Jackson Podcast. I don't even know how to feel about that. Like, I don't have children, but if I did, I would tell them how valuable they are. How valuable they are to me. How valuable they should be to themselves. Because we got to. We got to refrain from. Keeping them. And what we were taught. And what our parents was taught. And what their parents was taught. Light skin is better. Straight hair. Um, if you find naturally stable. You better than the person who's not. That's not true. We have to. Unlearn and be retaught so we can continue to move forward. Or stay stagnant. That's that's you, dog. That's you. But I just want my people and the people that subscribe to my channel to know that I appreciate you, man. And and you should appreciate who you are, no matter what race you is. This ain't a black thing, a white thing, an Italian thing, a Mexican thing. This is all people should be should value themselves. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a religious individual, but if you are and and you believe in Jesus or whatever, he died on the cross for all, not just your people. But let's get into the song of the week, man. And I'm going to switch the topic up, get into some political stuff. And I'm at this thing, man. Real talk.
So I watched Trump on CNN. <laughs> I watched Trump on CNN the other day. Well, I didn't watch it on TV. I don't, I don't watch TV. Like, how many people still watch television at the end of the day? Tell me how many of y'all watch television. Because I really don't know more. But I was on YouTube and I seen the playback of the, the stream of the town hall meeting. And I'm just going to talk about the things that stuck out to me. I'm going I'm, I'm to break down my political stance first. Growing up, I felt as if my vote wasn't valued. The things I had to say, my perception wasn't a value. So I didn't vote until Obama ran. I voted the first time for Obama because he was black. It wasn't because of a party. I'm guilty in that. He was black. I was misled. And he's not even black. Not to take anything away from mixed individuals. I love y'all too. But... When you get a piece of melanin in you, you black. I don't know why you're not white. It's just, help me out. My I, my thought process thinks like that. I think crazy. Like, why can't you be white? Because you got a piece of white in you. Why you got to be black? In any other race, if you Asian, you got a piece of black in you, you black. If you Hispanic, you got a piece, piece of black in you, you black. If you... Canadian you got a piece of black in you You black in America Why you ain't the other race Are we the dominant race on the planet It's just my thoughts So I didn't vote for him the second time I was Displeased with how Obama Did his thing in his first time So after that it's Hillary and Trump. I didn't vote. I felt like it was two fools voting. I didn't know Trump. I wasn't educated on Trump. I wasn't educated on Hillary. And and that, that crime bill and that law stuff, that didn't make me want to vote for the Clintons anymore once I realized what they did with the crime bill. So then let's fast forward it. We got Biden and Trump. I didn't vote again. Because Biden was I mean Trump was speaking foolishness His language was crazy He was talking crazy And Biden was a part of that crime bill That Hillary That Bill and all of them was a part of So I didn't want to be a part of that Because they handled a lot of black folks lives For things that they put into this country They allowed to be brought into this country And put it amongst us in the hood Fast forward to 2023 and I've become more knowledgeable. I realize that I have a lot of Republican values. Not Republican. Let me correct my terminology. I have a lot of conservative values in me. We more conservative and don't even know it. If you ain't trying to learn right now, you don't even know that you conservative at the end of the day. You was brought up conservative. You had to conserve or you wouldn't have had none at all. You would have died. You would have starved to death. You conservative. You appreciate things the way they are and you just want to elevate in life. You conservative. At the end of the day. You might <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to talk about that part. But in this town hall debate, I just I just told y'all who I was. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm for the best interest of me and mine In America we want to be protected And we want to be financially stable That's the two most important things We want to be protected And we want to be financially stable So I was listening to Trump And so far out of the other candidates he Don't judge me He would get my vote but I was listening to him And he said two things Two things in this town hall meeting That caught my attention That he spoke about And here's one of them I'm not testifying 
testify in person in this trial. There was a tape deposition of you from October in it. You defended the comments that you made on that Excess Hollywood tape about being able to grab women how you want. Do you stand by those comments? I said, if you're famous and rich or whatever I said, but I said, if you're a star, uh, you are, and I said, women let you. I didn't say you grab, I said women let. You know, you didn't use that word, but if you look, women let you. Now, they said, will you take that back? I said, look, for a million years, this is the way it's been. I want to be honest, this is the way it's been. I can take it back if you'd like to, but if you're a famous person, if you're a star, and I'm not referring to myself, I'm saying people that are famous, people that are you stars, were asked in the deposition, people that are rich, to be a star people that are powerful, yes. Uh, they tend to do pretty well in a lot of different ways, okay? And you would like me to take that back? I can't take it back because it happens to be true. I said it's been true for one million years, approximately a million years, perhaps a little bit longer than that. So you stand by those comments? Well, I don't want to lie. Mr. Oh, President, we have what, a lot of Here's questions. what she wants Mr. to President, say. Let's a get to the audience question tonight. A rich and famous person has no advantage over anyone else. Well, you do have an advantage. And I say unfortunately, but... That's the way it is. You said fortunately or unfortunately. Well, fortunately Mr. or unfortunately for her. Questions. That grab him by the vagina statement that he made. It went viral. It was trending. It was all over the place. But do he have a point when he say that celebrities or people that's financially stable have an advantage? What y'all think, man? Come on now. Is that true or not true? He said he didn't want to lie. I feel like okay, let's 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 take it off Trump for a minute. What if y'all heard Biden say that was true or that was a real talk or whatever? Man, people are disgruntled that the Democrats would allow him to be the the leader of the free world. Ain't nobody else presidential in america america looks sick though to be honest with you but i ain't voting for trump yet yet that's the key word i have to see more i have to see who the candidates are but he was speaking real talk man and that and let, let, let me play another visual president thank you wayne my, my, pres my question to you is, will you pardon the January 6 rioters who were convicted of federal offenses? I am inclined to pardon many of them. I can't say for every single one because a couple of them, probably they got out of control. But, you know, when you look at Antifa, what they've done to Portland, and if uh, you look at Antifa, look at what they've done to Minneapolis and uh, so many other, so many other places, look at what they did to Seattle and BLM, BLM. Many people were killed. These people, I'm not trying to justify anything, but you have two standards of justice in this country and what they've done, and I, I love that question, because what they've done to so many people is nothing, nothing. And then what they've done to these people, they've persecuted these people. And yeah, my, my answer is, I am most likely, if I get in, I will most likely, I would say it will be a large portion of them. You know, they did a very, <laughs> and it'll be very early on. And they're living in hell right now. So when it comes they're to living pardons. in hell. It's a lot of people living in hell and in jail and living in harsh realities or whatever though, but. That pardon thing, that, that make me second guess like who he is as a person and who I should be voting for because what are their interests like? Are his interests pure? I don't know what his interest is, though, but at the end of the day, when I think about Trump and when I think about what he said, pardoning people, he did pardon Kodak Black and Lil Wayne and a couple of more individuals that's in the hip-hop community. But I, I would want to see him pardon some common black folks. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people locked up that shouldn't be locked up. Jail isn't, isn't a rehabilitation place. And him speaking on pardoning those individuals, when I think he, he directed them to the Capitol on January the 6th. 
What was his intentions? And what was your intentions being there in the first place? You shouldn't have been there if you had pure intentions. So pardoning them, what are the crimes that they're locked up for? He's pardoning them from federal crimes. Federal is real deal, man. It's a real deal situation. But, man, thank y'all for tuning in, man. I'll be off next week from the podcast. I love everybody that subscribed to the channel that support me. Peace, love, plenty, abundance, man. And make sure you go get you some money. And I'm out. Chill. Jackson Podcast.